pretty good haul this morning. The season is in full swing. Hi, I'm Rich Lund. I'm just a guy trying to help out some butterflies, and I am very excited to give you this video. Much earlier this year, I released two videos on OE parasites. I wanted to make a third video, but I just did not have enough stars for the show. Last year was a pretty rough year for the monarchs. Well, at least it definitely was in my area. I didn't find hardly any monarch butterflies, only 30 in total, and it was spotty all throughout the summer. But this season's turning out much better. So you have the two videos that I made. The first one just told you what OE parasites are. The second one taught you how to test for them on an adult monarch butterfly. But the thing is, let's say you do test for one and it turns out it has the parasites. Well, it's just kind of end game for that butterfly. You shouldn't release it. But that doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Especially if you've put in a lot of hard time, work and effort, and you get this butterfly that you can't release, it's tough. I understand. And what good is it to let you know that a problem's out there if we don't give you some solution to it? Well, that's what this video is. We're going to show you what to do to prevent OE parasites from harming your monarchs. Come the summer months, I get a lot of comments on these videos, and I answer the questions as best I can. And something a lot of you have been telling me about, people in Florida, people on the West Coast, and most recently people in Hawaii are letting me know that the OE parasite is just out of control in those areas. There's a reason for this too. Up here in Michigan, we get really cold winters. While it doesn't kill the milkweed plant, it does kill the stalks. The stalks die out each year. The root system survives, and come spring, brand new stalks emerge. Well, these brand new stalks have zero OE on them. This is kind of a way of purging the OE spores and parasites that may have been left on the leaves. But if you're in these warmer climates, you have nice enough weather to where these milkweed plants just keep on sprouting up new stalks. And since the monarch butterflies are there year-round doing their thing, this means the OE parasite is constantly being spread again and again and again. I've even had people tell me stories about raising monarchs, using my video series to try and raise as many as they can, getting like 30 monarchs, and then even taking it as far in the dedication to test them for OE and finding that every single one of their monarchs had the OE parasite. And that was just the ones that made it. A lot of them died along the way, especially in the chrysalis stage. I want to let those people know that number one, this video is especially for you. And number two, that dedication is incredibly commendable. So thank you so much for staying encouraged and for continuing on in your effort to raise the monarchs and help out this species. I really hope this video can give you much better days ahead. Now if you're watching this video and you're like, what's this OE thing that he's talking about? I really urge you to go down into the description and I've got the link to the other two videos there or they're all the way at the end of this video and you can learn about them first. I think this video will make a lot more sense if you first find out what the OE parasite is, what its behavior is, and how it works. In order to prevent OE parasites, we're going to be using a bleach solution. Now, this solution must be prepared correctly. I implore you, do not eyeball the measurements here. Actually get the measuring equipment and measure it out. Now in my procedure, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. The only real piece of measuring equipment you need is a 20 ounce bottle and a tablespoon. That should be it. And if you use this method, not only will you kill any of the OE parasites that are currently on the eggs you find or on the nearby leaves, but you can also wash your milkweed leaves with this solution in order to prevent OE parasites from other leaves that you're giving your caterpillars once they've hatched out of the egg. Let's get into it. Okay, first part of the plan. We're gonna make a 20 ounce volume of solution. I chose that volume because that's gonna be an easy one for you to get a hold of. Here is a 20 ounce soda bottle. Now when they sell you a 20 ounce soda bottle, that doesn't mean the entire bottle is 20 ounces. So what I did was I took a Sharpie and I drew a line right at where the volume of the soda that was in here was at. So I know that that's 20 ounces. The solution that we're going to make is a 95% water, 5% bleach solution. In other words, by volume, that's a 1 to 19 ratio. One part bleach, 19 parts water. And I'm just using tap water for this. 
Tap water does not harm the monarchs whatsoever. Nothing in your tap water would. Think about it. Use sprinklers, right? That's going to be the same water source as your tap water. This here is straight bleach. Not long exposure to straight bleach would totally dissolve through the monarch eggs and kill the caterpillar inside that's developing. You don't want to use 100% straight bleach. But instead, a 5% solution with a one minute exposure time is ideal for what we're doing here. The bleach is able to eat right through those spores, kill off the OE parasites. But if the concentration of the bleach solution is too strong, or if they are overexposed to the bleach solution, then that bleach will also be eating enough away at the eggshell to break through and get inside of the egg and kill the caterpillar. That is why, I'm going to say it again, do not eyeball this. You need to measure it out. And needless to say, bleach can totally stain your clothes. Bleach the, the chemical dyes right out of it, so make sure you're not wearing your Sunday best or your Saturday night hotness while you do this. Tried to find my smaller funnel, but couldn't. To make your 5% bleach solution this way, you're going to take two tablespoons of store-bought bleach and place it into your bottle. Use the funnel so that you don't have any spills. Then you're going to fill the bottle up to that line that we drew with tap water. Or you could use distilled water too. I'm using the funnel at first so that way I can rinse any excess bleach that was in the funnel into the bottle and then once that's done I can just fill it up from the tap. Now if you want to make a different volume than this, the math is actually pretty easy. Whatever volume you want, take that volume and divide it by 20. Whatever your answer to that is, that's the volume of bleach you will need. Pour in that bleach and then just add up enough water until you're at the desired volume that you started with. That will always get you a 5% bleach solution. Now that you're up to the line, put the cap on. And to make sure that it's consistently the same concentration throughout, spend some time mixing it up thoroughly. Okay, now that I've made my bleach solution and it's the correct concentration, I'm not actually going to use all of this but I need a, a different container that I can easily get into, something that has a large mouth to it. I'm going to be dipping the eggs into this solution, so I want enough room to where my fingers can easily get in there, along with some tweezers. Any extra solution that you have, you can save and you can continue to use this, but make sure that lid gets on tight. Think about it. If the lid is off, the water is going to evaporate, but the bleach will stay in there. That's going to make the concentration of the bleach get stronger and stronger as more and more water evaporates. So make sure that lid is on tight. If not, the solution that was fine to use the first time could become too strong and thus fatal to the monarch eggs if used again if the lid was left off. So here's our solution that we're going to dip the eggs into to cleanse them. But you're also going to immediately need to have ready some more tap water just to rinse them after they've been exposed to the bleach solution. So I have just tap water here in this jar. Let's put that aside for a second and get the eggs ready. Now I've seen other people do this online and this is where I'm going to deviate from their method. What some do is they'll just take the leaves and they'll put them right into the solution. They'll make a large enough batch so that way they can have a lot of leaves all cleansed at once. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I am going to say that's not what I want to do. You see, if I do that, I feel like I might lose count of how many eggs I have. I might have one go missing. I might not see it. It might get down in the bottom of my solution and I just miss it. I want to know exactly how many eggs I am treating. And there's a way that I can ensure that every single egg is accounted for. The way that I can account for every single egg is I'm going to cut out the egg from the leaf, just like I do in the other videos that maybe you've seen. But this time, I'm going to cut a little bit extra leaf, so that way I've got something for my tweezers to easily hold on to. Okay, the eggs are ready. Now, they need 60 seconds, one minute, in the bleach solution. They then need to be immediately transferred into the tap water and rinsed for about one minute. You can certainly go a little bit over on this one because being in the tap water isn't going to harm it. But you want to thoroughly make sure that it has been rinsed. I'm going to use a timer so that way I know one minute and I know at least the second minute and then I'm going to put them back on the plate. 
Please notice also, I've thought about dripping. I'm doing bleach, then water, then the plate, in that order. That way if any dripping happens, I don't have the bleach solution dripping onto my plate. Because I don't think I'd be able to tell a bleach drop from a water drop. I want to ensure that I've troubleshot as much as I can while I do this. And also, by doing it this way, I've got 18 eggs here. I know I have 18 eggs. Every leaf piece has one egg on it. And so, when I'm done, I should have 18 eggs still. And if I don't, I know that there's one lost somewhere in this process that I need to find. If I was washing a whole bunch of leaves with many eggs on it, and I didn't really know how many numbers I was dealing with, it's a much greater chance that I'd eventually lose an egg. Alright, here we go. Here's our first egg. Starting the timer now. Now, while it's in there, there's little bubbles that are going to be on the leaf and sometimes on the egg. You want to thoroughly agitate it to make sure that those bubbles aren't still on there. And you don't need to use these needle nose tweezers like I have. You can certainly use your simple eyebrow plucking tweezers. At home tweezers are fine. We're at 33 seconds, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, immediately into the tap water. Now I know that this is tedious for every single egg. I understand that. And that's why also, if you want to do a whole batch of leaves with eggs on it, that's fine. I'm not saying you're wrong in doing that. It'll save you time. I just know that I don't want to lose any egg along the way. When I found my first egg ever, it was such an awesome experience. And I wanted to take care of that egg so well. If anything had happened to it under my care, I would have been devastated. Well, now that I'm doing a lot more numbers, I don't want to lose that feeling of accountability. I don't want to ever feel like, well, yeah, I might lose an egg along the way, but, you know, I'm saving all these other ones. I don't want to ever have that attitude. Every single egg, in my opinion, deserves respect, and you need to treat it as such. All right, we're at 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, Okay, it's been a full minute in here. Let me go ahead and take it out. Now I can place it on the plate. Now once it's on the plate, you can also absorb just a little bit of any extra moisture there, but other than that, you can let it air dry. Now I'm not going to have you sit through and watch me do all 18 of these, but I think you get the idea, right? However, for the purpose of experimentation, Yes, I will be doing all 18. Alright, last one's done. Now notice also, if I count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I've got 18 eggs. That's the same number I started with. Now, to be fully honest with you, I thought that, uh, that one of those eggs would fall off a leaf during this process. All 18 stayed on. But I also want to deal with that situation. What if you're doing this and one of your eggs falls off? Well first, which solution did it fall off in? If it fell off in the bleach solution, immediately what you need to do is pour that entire bleach solution into a larger container and then add water. In chemistry we have a saying, dilution is the solution. So to first deal with this problem, because you don't know how long that egg is going to take for you to get it out of there, you want to dilute the solution so that way it's not as strong. Add plenty of water to it. Next, these eggs can be caught easily if you strain them. Now you've got a couple of options and I've seen some people use some really small strainers, that would work. But also, you could decant the water and pour it into a coffee filter. There's no way that egg is going to get through the coffee filter. Okay, now ever so carefully, what I've done here is I've removed an egg from the leaf. But I didn't want to harm the egg so I just tore away the leaf that was around the egg. Now let's pretend it falls into our solution. The first thing that's likely to happen is exactly what happened here. It's floating up there at the top. The eggs do tend to float though I've seen plenty of them sink before too. What I've made here is my Monarch egg catching peanut butter jar of science with a coffee filter on top and a rubber band holding it in place. I can take my water 
that has the egg floating around in there somewhere. Try to swirl it around and I can pour into this jar. Now in doing so, this time around it actually stuck to the side of the jar. If you use plastic jars that will happen a little bit more often, though it can happen with glass too. Let's actually pour the egg into the coffee filter. There, got it. And now you can see there's our egg attached to the coffee filter paper. Now again, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. There is some leaf still attached to it, but I didn't want to harm the egg just for video purposes and risk that by trying to pull it off the leaf. And now that we retrieved it, we can just place it back on the same leaf, or it could have been another little piece of milkweed. And now it too is cleansed. All right. So our eggs have been treated, and now it's just a waiting game. We're going to have to wait the two or three days to see, do they black tip? I'm going to verify for you that yes, this bleaching solution did not harm them. See you in a couple days. All right, it's been two days. Some of our treated eggs have not only already black tipped, but they already hatched last night as well. That guy already hatched, and he's already off exploring. Uh, this one hatched here, too. And these three are currently black-tipped. We also had a few hatch, and I already got them on the leaves. These guys actually hatched the night that I bleach-treated the eggs. So, yep, all 18 hatched or black-tipped. I think that's hopefully evidence that this worked out great. Again, third time I'm going to say it. Make sure you measure out your bleach for this solution. If it's too strong, that can cause damage to the eggs, damage to the caterpillars. But as long as you keep it at 5% and you give it a one minute exposure time followed by a very quick rinse, it's safe for them. Now also, for those who battle OE big time in your areas, this method can also be used to cleanse your leaves. Hey, we got some healthy caterpillars now, but what if I go get them some leaves and the leaves have OE spores on them? Well, then they still get infected. So if you really are battling a whole lot of OE, what you need to do is now make this bleach solution in larger batches, obviously, and actually wash and cleanse whatever leaves you're giving the caterpillars. I know that's going to take even more commitment on your part, but also from those who have told me about the OE troubles that they've had, I know that they're willing to do this. I really hope this provides you with some great results if your leaves have been cleansed as you're feeding the caterpillars and you're winding up getting no OE, you have negative tests for that, please let me know about it. I'd love to hear about how this works in the comments section. And again, if you need to make a larger batch, just follow the easy equation and you can make a gallon at a time if you really want to if you're going through that many leaves. I'm Rich Lund. Thank you very much for helping me take care of the monarchs. See you next time.